on the edges of this massive city in one of the toughest neighborhoods where the cinder block homes climb up into the hills. I saw. We met an American boy. Nice. Who's just trying to fit in. Tranquilo. Isaiah Cruz was born in the United States. He's an American citizen, but the nine-year-old lives in Mexico since his father, Indalucio, was deported from the U.S. When Isaiah arrived here, he says he was treated badly at school. Even teachers had harsh words for him. That I, I didn't belong there. What did that feel like? That hurted really my feelings. He says they told the other kids to act like he didn't exist. No les hagas caso. Imaginan que él es invisible. He said you were invisible? Yeah. That make you mad? Yeah, because whenever I did that, they were saying, ¿Alguien me puede ayudar? Can somebody help me? And they said, oh, did I hear something? They pretended like you weren't there. Yeah. His f close friends were saying, hey, I'm sorry, like, I can't talk to you because I was told not to talk to you. Isaiah's dad says the school was frustrated because Isaiah didn't have his U.S. birth records with him, paperwork he needed to apply for dual citizenship in Mexico and to get a CURP, the Mexican equivalent of a Social Security number. Without all of his documents, the family says the school told them they could not report Isaiah's grades to the Mexican government. And eventually, they say, the school told Isaiah he had to leave. He's telling me, Dad, like, how come we're not allowed to go in school? I was clueless as to how to answer um, that particular question. Isaiah is one of the children sometimes called the invisibles here because they end up like kids without a country. Without their U.S. birth records, it's like they don't exist in Mexico. Many of those kids were born in Texas, and we found Texas makes it harder for those children to get their birth records and move on with their lives. Children like Giovanni Aguilera, he was born in Texas in El Paso, but living in Mexico now, he's in a struggle just to hear the sounds of Mexico City's crowded streets. Giovanni has a birth no? defect called microtia, an ear that's not fully formed. It's difficult. Mm -hmm. His mother, Fabiola, says it's difficult. Without more treatment, doctors tell her Giovanni's hearing will get worse. But in Mexico, he was denied government health coverage. She told us, I'm concerned he may lose his hearing, and also because kids laugh at him because of his ear. As the child of a Mexican parent, Giovanni is eligible for dual citizenship and should have access to Mexican health care. But to apply for those things, he needs his birth certificate from Texas and an apostille. That's an international certificate of authenticity. Fabiola didn't have all of those records when she moved back to Mexico suddenly to escape an abusive relationship. So she sent a request to the state of Texas. But about nine months later, the family said they were still waiting for Texas to respond. So they're sort of caught in a mess of red tape. Absolutely. Um, that's really what it is. Helen Kerwin is a lawyer helping Giovanni's family. She's originally from Texas and works for a Mexico City nonprofit called Amumi where they help parents get records from the U.S. Generally, families who come to us come to us because they've been trying for years to get the, the issue resolved and they haven't managed to do it on their own. Kerwin says it takes some Mexican parents months just to complete the applications for birth records. Many of them don't have forms of ID that U.S. states require to apply. They don't have checks from U.S. banks. They can't get U.S. money orders here. Some have to travel to a larger city to get the forms notarized because U.S. notaries are only found at U.S. consulates. There's a lot of logistics behind it that become very, very expensive. The process is even worse, Kerwin says, if the child was born in Texas because of a massive log jam at the Texas Department of State Health Services in the Office of Vital Statistics. They are currently delayed three or four months in just issuing a standard birth certificate, and we have a request for a birth certificate correction that's been in since January of this year, and we still haven't heard anything. So months go by and, right. and you get no response from Texas? Right. Kerwin says many families could get their records right away if Texas would just do something most other states have done to cooperate with Mexico. Three years ago, the Mexican government started using a new system that allows officials here to electronically verify the accuracy of a child's U.S. birth certificate. 
but that system has been no help to children born in Texas. That's because Texas is one of nine states that do not participate in the system called EVE, Electronic Verification of Vital Events. It's an online hub that allows Mexican officials to instantly verify a U.S. birth certificate, and it eliminates the need for families to apply for an apostille from the state where their child was born. But since Texas doesn't use EVE, more kids are left in limbo. I'll have Norma Garcia explain. It makes me feel like sad. She went to the small Mexican town of San Siro de Acosta. It was hard, very hard. Jackie Cervantes was born in Dallas and lived in Texas until her father decided to return to Mexico to help run a family business. Jackie wants to be a doctor, but that dream was put on hold when she was kicked out of a new high school where she had been accepted to study science. They needed my certificate. Um, or they're gonna kick me out like that. They were very rude with me and that hurt a lot my feelings because it was like heartbreaking to me. Since officials here cannot verify Jackie's Texas birth certificate, they say she cannot go to school because they have no way to verify her identity. Jackie's mother, Yolanda, told us they have tried and tried to get Jackie's birth records from Texas, but the state denied one application, saying the family did not send all of the supporting information needed. Es una pesadilla para ella y para nosotros. Yolanda told us it's been a nightmare for her daughter and are completely in the dark about where to get help. About an hour from Jackie's house at the regional office of Migrant Affairs, officials told us they can often help children like Jackie quickly. A cual el estado de Texas decidió no adherirse. But the director told us Texas has decided not to participate in the EVE system. So instead, his office pays a Texas law firm to try to help families get the records. Forward. On his desk, Dale. he showed us a stack of 70 Texas birth certificates he received in just one week from children who need apostilles from Texas. ¿Qué pasaría si Texas eh, se incluyera en, en este programa de validación de nacimiento. He says if Texas were able to participate in EVE, it would be very important. It would save time and money. It would be extremely helpful to have Texas in the system. Anthony Stout Just runs the, the EVE system at the National Association for Public Health Statistics and Information Systems. He says the Mexican government has used EVE to instantly verify more than 75,000 birth certificates of kids born in other states. In some ways, it's, it's a matter of life or death. If you have a medical ailment and you need access to government programs to, uh, you know, assist you, you absolutely need to get timely access to those programs. And the EVE system returns a response within one or two seconds. Stout told us the Texas Department of State Health Services could actually use EVE right now. Texas does already have the EVE system fully installed on their servers, so they are able to uh, flip a switch and turn on EVE at this time. They have the equipment and this is all ready to go, but they just haven't turned it on? It is ready to go and they haven't yet turned it on. And uh, me, from, from where I sit, I can't tell uh, why that is. To find out why, we contacted State Health Commissioner John Hellerstedt. For weeks, his staff refused our interview requests, so we went to find him at an event in Austin. I wanted to ask you about the Texas-born kids in Mexico who are struggling to get their birth certificates from your department. What do you say to them? Uh, we're working as hard as we can to fix that problem. Some of these kids in Mexico can't attend school, they can't see a doctor because they don't have that documentation. Are you concerned about that? Absolutely. They're vital, they're vital records. That's why they're called vital records. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're doing our very best to fix that situation. Why is it taking so long to get people birth certificates? Uh, it's a difficult process. We have had a backlog for uh, a considerable amount of time, and it's taken us time to make that backlog go away. State health records we obtained show it takes the health department an average of 75 business days to answer mailed-in requests for birth certificates. Business days, that's about four months. They say the state's population has grown and they get more requests than staff can handle. But the commissioner would not say if Texas will ever use EVE to speed up the process. He says the state could not use EVE until it first updated its own record system. Now that's done, but he still wants more time to look at the security of data in the EVE system. 
the same system more than 40 other states have already approved. We're in a position to reevaluate whether or not participation in the EU system is in the best interest of Texans. In the meantime, Hellerstedt's department told us Mexican officials could use the Texas.gov website to request birth records electronically. But in recent months, that website said even those processing times averaged two months. The state legislature recently gave the health department funding to hire more staff to reduce delays. But this internal memo we uncovered shows from June of last year to July of this year, the backlog more than doubled from 26,000 pending requests to 66,000. The extra months that we wait for documents from Texas really do impact in the lives of these kids. In the nine months Giovanni has been waiting, his mother says she's noticed he's having more trouble hearing. He turns around more to one side when you talk to him. She says, I can't take him in for treatment. He has no health coverage, and the family cannot afford private doctors. Helen Kerwin wonders why Texas won't do more to help. She questions if some Texas officials just don't want to help parents in Mexico because some of them had children while living undocumented in the U.S. It's hard not to have that sensation. I mean, certainly the delays at Vital Statistics hurt everybody who asked for a birth certificate, but it definitely has a, a specific and disproportionate impact on this, this group of kids. And as we found, some advocates argue Texas has a history of putting roadblocks in front of children born to immigrants who need their birth records. Up next are politics behind the delays. I think we can safely assume that there is a lack of good faith. Texas lawmakers demand action to help the children caught in a bureaucratic nightmare. It's a clearly a failure of state government. And the emotional toll, how some families say the impact of feeling invisible can last years. It's embarrassing to see uh, American children suffering the way they do. In the heart of Mexico, young and vulnerable American kids struggling to prove their identity, struggling to get basic services because they can't access their birth records from the American state where they were born. In the case of Texas, I think we can safely assume that there is a lack of good faith and a lack of political will to help these families ensure that their kids can access the documents that will then prove their identity. Tony Payan studies U.S.-Mexico relations at Rice University. He believes politics are the reason Texas is the only border state not using EVE, an electronic system that helps Mexican officials instantly verify U.S. birth records, allowing children to register for health care and attend school. There's a certain hostility to immigrants, to the immigrant population. And so I think that Texas uh, leadership does not want to participate in this. He argues Texas has a track record of making the process hard. In 2013, a group of Mexican parents living in Texas sued the state health department after records offices denied birth certificates to parents who could not prove they were in the U.S. legally. The parents had to show a Mexican passport with a valid U.S. visa. In court, the Texas Attorney General argued those children didn't really need their birth certificates to get services in Texas. The families disagreed. In 2016, the state settled the lawsuit, allowing parents to present a Mexican ID card instead, one they can get from a Mexican consulate. That suit was filed before John Hellerstedt was appointed state health commissioner, and when we approached him, he denied that his decision to delay the EVE system is designed to make things harder for undocumented parents. Is that what's going on? Absolutely not. Tony Payan says if there is a strategy to punish immigrant families, it's the children who end up hurt most. In this case, children who are U.S. citizens legally entitled to their records. Well, I think it's uh, inhumane. I mean, obviously, we, uh, you know, these are people who are born here. Uh, that is the U.S. law, that is the U.S. Constitution, that is the 14th Amendment. But the 14th Amendment's guarantee of birthright citizenship has come under some attack recently. I'd much rather find out whether or not anchor babies 
are actually citizens. In the 2016 presidential race, Donald Trump suggested children born to undocumented immigrants are not really citizens. I don't think they have American citizenship. And if you speak to some very, very good lawyers, and I know right. some would disagree, but many of them agree with me, you're going to find they do not have American citizenship. We have to start a process where we take back our country. Since 2016, we've seen attacks on the Hispanic community from the federal level and the state level. Democratic State Representative Rafael Anchia leads the Mexican-American caucus in the state legislature. He points out federal courts have repeatedly found Texas discriminated against Hispanic voters with restrictive voter ID requirements. It doesn't surprise me that the state is trying to make it harder for these Texans, by the way, uh, who may be of Mexican parents, to get their birth certificate. He also told me and Norma Garcia there's no reason Texans should wait months for birth records. No, it's not acceptable. It's a clearly a failure of state government. We need to be getting Texans as these kids are, their birth certificates as quickly and painlessly as possible. After hearing what our reporting uncovered, Representative Anchia and his group of more than three dozen lawmakers wrote to the state health commissioner urging him to immediately adopt the EVE system. But Anchia also criticizes Mexico for denying education and health care to children waiting for the records. Since 2017, Mexican law has said children should be able to attend any school with a temporary ID. But in practice, many school directors are either not aware of that or are not following the rules. That to me is immoral and it's a big failure on the part of the Mexican government. The Mexican agency in charge of immigration scheduled an interview with us in Mexico City but then canceled. We asked to reschedule, even asked the government to respond to questions in writing, but we've had no response. It's embarrassing to see uh, American children suffering the way they do in Mexico. Jose Lira founded a charity that helps deported families adjust to life in Mexico. He was deported from Texas after issues with his green card status and says he's battled to get his teenage daughter's birth records. The state of Texas uh, took almost five months just to respond to, to our letters. He told us the waiting and the lack of ID added to his daughter's feelings she just didn't belong as she tried to adapt to a new country. She was under extreme depression. I mean, for the whole summer of last year, it was nothing but depression. And he says more families face this situation every day. Just in San Luis Potosí State, he says more than 7,000 people deported from the U.S. will arrive this year, most from Texas. There is no resources and the problem is growing and growing and growing. Siempre se me cerraron las puertas. And as one mother and daughter told Scott in Mexico City, these paperwork nightmares can inflict scars that last years. Patricia Rios Madragón and her daughter Catherine describe a fight that spanned more than a decade. She says, I brought her here when she was three, and now she's 19, and all this time we've been struggling and struggling. Catherine was born in Florida. There was an error on her birth certificate. It only listed her father's last name. When her parents split up and her mom moved back to Mexico, they couldn't prove Catherine was the child of a Mexican mother. She says it's sad being in Mexico. I'm being denied services that everybody else has. She's managed to get into a school but still couldn't participate in things like athletics because she has no Mexican health coverage. She says seemingly small things like that made her stand out and she was bullied, even cut by another student. Her mom says one organization that offered to help them with their paperwork took their money and they're just now getting things straightened out. It's very sad, I think, for the kids to not be able to assimilate correctly into Mexico. Pamela Cruz, a researcher at Rice University, says children in this situation can experience profound emotional effects. There's a bit of culture clash when they go to Mexico, but they face a lot of uh, a lot of challenges and a lot of coping. And the numbers are growing. She says research suggests in recent years more Mexican nationals are leaving the U.S. than entering, many taking their American-born kids with them. There might be many more that, again, are invisible to the system. The bottom line is Texas should always be number one and not lagging behind. Rafael Anchia wants Texas to help make the transition easy giving children a way to immediately access their Texas birth records. No more waiting and waiting. Since we first met Giovanni Aguilera, he received his Texas records. His family says they waited about 10 months. 
His mother is still worried his hearing has worsened. But it's been an extremely, extremely delayed process. But at least now his attorney says Giovanni can start the process of getting his Mexican ID and the medical care he needs. Texas can definitely do better. These are not difficult fixes. I think it requires just a little bit of political will. Yes, I mean, grandes. Jackie Cervantes, the Dallas-born student who says she was kicked out of school, got her Texas birth records recently with help of a family friend in Texas who finally cut through the red tape. But with this school year slipping by, she's lost time. She had to enroll in another school that does not offer classes she needs. And she's even been told her grades from earlier years in Mexico might not count because of records issues. Isaiah Cruz, the American boy who says teachers told him he was invisible, is still in the process of getting some of his records. He needed a court order from North Carolina where he was born. On his birth certificate, his dad's two last names were reversed, a somewhat common mistake U.S. hospitals make with Latin American names. It requires a more complicated correction. His dad's been saving up money to finish the process and pay medical bills they've racked up because Isaiah can't get government health care either, causing some sleepless nights. It is concerning at times. What's your biggest worry when you have those sleepless nights? <sighs> sleepless nights is... How am I going to pay for the debt, um, you know, that this um, has brought before us? Now I have to do this the same way. But Isaiah was able to get into a new school where they helped him get a temporary Mexican ID number. And the new school that I'm going to, they don't tell me that I'm invisible anymore. And I like that. Isaiah's old school has a new director who told us in the future he would tell staff to treat everyone like they belong. But he said all students need a Mexican ID number and their birth certificate to attend, something other American kids here are still waiting for, hoping someday they'll have the paperwork that makes them visible to the rest of the world. We're talking about dual national kids. Both countries should have an interest in their well-being, and yet they fall through the cracks.